Or a guy to be with a guy. I know I'm in the house. It's all good. Come on. Y'all want to talk about it in church. Come out. Come we need to talk about it in church. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Come on. Come on. God didn't design it. He didn't. That's not what God designed. But see, the enemy programs you. Yes. Woo. Enemy gave you these wrong words that you made your own. Yes. I remember when I was younger, I used to listen to this song. Another song. Uh, rolling down the street, smoking in the, sipping on gin and juice. Lay back. I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. Now, that song got in my spirit. Real talk. It's a true story. True story. True story. So now I'm riding. I'm thinking about smoking weed because that's the popular thing to do. That's what everybody rides to. We all ride to it. And think about smoking weed. You know, I ain't never smoked nothing before, but I really am thinking about it. I really want to because it seems like it's real cool. It's dope. That's what everybody doing. You know what I'm saying? And then we, st we started going to the store. We would steal uh, gin and juice. Gin and juice at the time came in a little flask. It was a little flat flask, and you could take it and slide it in your pocket. So we would go into the little store, because at the time they were selling convenience stores and all that. We'd take it, we'd slide it in our pocket, we'd, we'd so now I'm drinking me a little gin and juice. And then one day at 14 years old, true story, I'm at my homeboy's house with his mama, and his mama came in the room. Uh, I had stayed all night with his mama came in the room and said, Hey, Mike, do you want to smoke a joint with me and my son? Now, this is a grown woman and a 14-year-old son that she was smoking with. This is a real story. My mama knew it. My mama would have killed her. But, you know, so, so, so she said, so she came, in the, she came in the room and said, do you want to smoke this weed with us? I said, rolling down the street, smoking in the... Yes, I want to get high with you. <laughs> Words Come on. determine my thoughts. Come on. My thoughts now determine my emotions. Uh -huh. My emotions then determine my decisions. My decisions then determine my actions. My actions then shape my habits. My habits then form my character. I'm a wee head. And then my character leads me to a destination. I smoked all the way into my 20s. Wow. Wow. Yep. Come on but what if I wasn't introduced That's right. to these words? That's right. Right. That's right. What if I really mm. owned what God's word said right here? What if... God's word became the dominant in my life, and I really meditated in that place. What if I really started thinking about what he said about me? What about those words turning to my thoughts? What if I start meditating on the goodness of God concerning me? What if I start meditating on the fact that God said he had a plan for my life? That before I formed you in the womb, Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I knew you, and I had a plan for you, and I separated you, and I set you apart. I preordained your destination. See, what if you meditated on it? What if you really believe that God has a plan for your life? What if you really woke up to your purpose? What would you be doing with your life right now? Because I'm trying to start a riot. Amen. This is how many minutes I got? Because I'm about 10. 10 minutes. All right, come on now. I ain't even, I, I ain't even got past the first few scriptures. Again. But I'm going to take these 10 minutes. Listen, 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 listen. I hope you get something so far. I'm trying to show you about being rooted in the word of God. And I'm trying to show you that the word of God said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh -huh. Your flesh always wants to do opposite of what the word of God tells you. That's the truth. Listen to what I'm telling you. Your flesh did not get born again. That's right. Your flesh is your flesh. Right. Holiness is on the inside of you in your born again spirit. See, you are holy because you are born again, and now on the inside of you, there's this thing called the, nothing, this person called the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you right now. And see, you got to train yourself in the Holy Ghost. Let me go there. I'm going to jump all the way past all of these notes, and let me jump down to that part of my notes here. See, 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 the thing I want you to understand is, is he says this, 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 real quick. Romans 12 and 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed. Say, be not conformed. Be not conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Changing what you're thinking. What are the words in your mind? Renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God for you. So Paul is talking to believers right here. He says, I beseech you therefore, brother. That means he's talking to you as a Christian. 
Christian. Christ. Christian. Say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. See, by the mercies of God, that those are his grace for your life. It is his undeserved favor. It is his goodness concerning your life that God has a plan for your life. You got to present your life as a living sacrifice. Amen. So you can't allow your life to be a reflection of the wrong image. Listen to me. Listen. Say, I cannot, I cannot allow, myself allow myself to be a reflection, be a reflection of, the of the wrong image. See, if you put in the wrong words in your thinking, then you're going to be a reflection of the wrong image. you got to be transformed in your thinking and in your mind and in your soul. Amen. Conformity happens from the outside in. Listen to what I'm telling you. Conformity happens from the outside in. It's influenced externally. In other words, you start conforming. You're a Christian. You say you love God. You say you know God. But then on the outside, your friend's telling you to do this. Your friend's got you listening to that. Your friend's texting you this. Then somebody asks you, send me a pic. Send me a pic. Now you're sexting over, you know, now you're doing all this stuff. Now you are conforming. Come on, sir. From the outside, you're, you're changing into an image that God didn't design for you. Yes. Because you're being dominated by the wrong things, the wrong people, the wrong influences in your life. Say it with me. I will not, I will not conform, conform to the ways of the world. The of the world. You got to make a decision. You got to make a decision whether you're going to be average. Average is everybody smoking, everybody drinking, everybody sexing, everybody sexting, everybody posting up on EIG, everybody Snapchatting nasty stuff, everybody taking their clothes off of the ground, everybody doing that. But, but transformed is, no, I'm renewing my mind. I'm no longer going to be like everybody else. Amen. Why? Because I am a born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, Christian young person. Amen? Amen. Are you listening to me, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, let's jump down here. Let's jump down here. Let's bring it home with this. Let's bring it home.